Hello, future metal bender. If you've never soldered before, don't panic. You'll be fine. You're likely wielding a stick iron something like this. This welder iron comes with a couple different tips. The big fat one is installed. It also comes with a little tiny pointed one and this middle of the road one that I have installed on this one using a simple flathead screwdriver and that screw right there. Now it's tempting to go straight for this tiny tip because it looks like it'll be more precise, but thermodynamics are not kind here. This tip won't get as hot as a slightly wider surface like this chisel tip. It might make soldering a little bit trickier to start just because it's not as hot. The super wide tip is great if we ever need to convey a lot of heat into really large areas, like when you're soldering a wire to a big metal sheet, but it's gonna be too big for soldering into pins. This one, like I said, I got in there by loosening this screw which is very short, um, don't loosen it too far and lose it, and then just tightening it back around the tip that I actually want in there. This is obviously not something you should be doing while the iron is hot. And speaking of hot, this thing gets really, really hot, like plastic melting, fire starting, severe burn hot, okay? It starts heating as soon as you plug it in. I have it plugged it in, so it's hot. And it'll just keep drawing, in this case 40 watts, or 25 or 80, depending on your model and it just stays hot for quite a while. Okay, so let's talk about how to melt things you're actually supposed to melt instead of yourself. You're going to be doing a couple kinds of soldering, two big ones. You're going to be attaching wires to each other, and you're going to be attaching through hole things to a PCB or perf board. Let's do the wires first. Strip each wire about half an inch. Using needle nose pliers, or your thumbnail will work, make a little bend in each one of those. Hook them together, press them together, and if you have leftover wire on the ends, twist them as far as you can. If you have helping hands, which I highly recommend, grip them right in there. If you do not have helping hands, just get on your fire retardant mat and hold your wires down using solder or your strippers or something else. I'm going to be a civilized person and use my helping hands. So, use the iron to heat the joint for at least one second and then start touching the solder to the other side of the joint. So one 1,000 and then start putting that solder in. It's not gonna melt straight away but you can see it starts getting sucked in towards that heat source. If you do it on the same side as the iron, you're more likely to just end up with a big ball of solder that's only connected to one of the wires and not very useful. Uh, solder smoke is not technically dangerous, but it's annoying. So I usually have a little USB powered fan on my station when I'm doing this. So look at that, nice solid joint. If you're like me and have wires going out the ends, you can slip heat shrink on the end. Um, if you were doing this to two connected wires, you needed to do this step before, sorry. If you are gonna slide it on before you solder the joint, make sure to keep it towards the end of the wire, nice and far away, because this does shrink up when it gets hot. That means that if it's right here, this wire is gonna get hot and the heat shrink will suck up on there and then you can't move it onto your joint. Weasel that on there. This is really easy to do if you have a heat gun. With a tip like this, use the side. So not the super useful tip up top and not this unreplaceable part of your iron down here. This is the sweet spot right in there because you are going to get a little bit of black gunk on it no matter how careful you are. So you want that to be on the replaceable but not useful part of your iron. Okay. So that was step one. Super beautiful, nice tight joint. Nice. The other thing you're gonna need to know how to do is solder through hole components like capacitors, resistors, or ICs into a PCB or perf board. PCBs are easier than perf board because they have copper everywhere. Um, perf board is just a little bit trickier. I'm going to bend the leads as close as I can to the body of the element I'm soldering in and put it through the two holes I'm soldering. I'm gonna push that all the way in towards the board. Keep it as low profile as possible. You don't want anything wandering around for other wires to potentially short against. And on the other side, 
push those legs slightly towards the board just to keep it in place. Flip it over, put it back in your helping hands. And same sort of thing, we're going to heat the junction between the wire and the copper pad for about one second. Start putting solder in, again, on the opposite side of the soldering iron so it forms a nice joint. You're going to see something that looks a little bit like a Hershey's Kiss form, and that is perfect. So, 1,000, and then apply solder. And just like that, you have a nice shiny joint. So you'll notice I didn't pull these two away quite at the same time. I pulled the solder away first. I'll do it again. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. Solder away. Iron away. <laughs> that's because if you pull the iron away first accidentally, you're gonna end up with either this stuck to your board and that's kind of embarrassing, or what we call a, a cold solder joint. It doesn't look quite as shiny as these good ones and means that you're probably not getting a very solid connection there. They're the first thing to break if you do have issues. And one of the first things to check if your board is not behaving the way you expect it to. Once you've done that, I usually, oh, I don't have my snips. <laughs> if you have snips, go ahead and snip those off so that you can rest the board flat and you have perfect little solders. So again, we did all this with a cheap stick iron. It works just fine. Um, you'll probably like a real soldering station better, but this is just fine. Remember that practice makes perfect.